Another tool that's used in planning is called a storyboard. This has long been a feature of Hollywood in that they would sketch out every scene of a movie or TV show for some reason. So the producer could see the shot that's required, what the angle positions are going to be, what props are going to be needed. But it's also used in terms of editing the story. The producers will sit down and go through the storyboard and decide maybe there are scenes that could be deleted, don't even need to be shot. It's also used for gathering financial backing for a movie or a, t a TV show. Well, in terms of developing software, we're going to borrow that storyboard idea and sketch out what every screen is going to look like in our application. Now, for most of our applications, at least starting out in this class, they're going to be very simple. They're going to have one screen, so we're going to have one storyboard. Here's a typical storyboard. Uh, I'm going to start with the window itself drawn out. We call this in terms of Microsoft Visual Studio a form. That's the object that it is, the type of class it is. It's a form object. It's going to have a title bar, a minimize button, a maximize button, and a close button. Typical of all windows within Microsoft Windows. To that, I'm going to add some text boxes. A text box is another type of object defined by a text box class. Text boxes are used for gathering input from the user as well as displaying output. The values inside a text box or the text inside of it is dynamic. It might change. The user might enter information into it. The program might change the display of the data inside that text box as well. Then I'm going to add in another type of object called a button. And here I have four buttons that I'm planning for this project. One to add the two numbers together, one to subtract, one to multiply, and one to divide. So a button is another type of class, and these four buttons in my application are instances of the button class. And then the third type of object I'm going to add are labels. Labels are static text. The user can't change the text in the label, though our program can. So in code, we can write it in such a way that it will change the display in a label object or label control. So here I'm using label simply to provide some uh, instructions to the user and also then to label what the different text boxes are. And then finally, in my storyboard, I'm going to just write down what the names are of these different objects. Now, every object in Visual Studio has a name. In Visual Studio, when you create an object, assigns a name to it as a default. And so our text boxes, by default, would be named text box 1, text box 2, text box 3. But those aren't very meaningful. And if I get a bunch of text boxes, it might be hard to remember what each one is. And when I'm looking at my code and I see the name text box 2, I really have no idea what that text box is unless I remember what my interface and how I've designed it. So anything I'm going to use in code, I'm going to rename the name of that object. We're going to refer to these three text boxes in our code. So I'm going to name them something a little more meaningful. TXT first num, TXT second num, and TXT solution. Now you notice I'm starting all three of those with the letters TXT. This is called Hungarian notation, and it's a common format that Visual Basic uh, programmers use and other programmers use in terms of creating names of objects. So any text box is going to start with the letters TXT. C Sharp users typically don't necessarily do this, um, but for the purpose of this class, I'm going to use that same Hungarian notation in writing C Sharp objects, and I use this format even in other languages. I find it very helpful in terms of being able to recognize a name in an object and go, oh yeah, that's a text box because it starts with TXT. Same with buttons. We're going to name our four buttons BTN Add, BTN Subtract, and BTN Multiply, and BTN Divide. And we're going to give, we're going to start each of those names with the letter BTN, which is the Hungarian notation for a button. In terms of our algorithms for those four buttons, they're basically all very similar with the exception of the process. We're going to add two numbers together, we're going to subtract two, we're going to multiply two, and we're going to divide the second from the first. This makes it really easy to, to code because I can write my code for one button and then copy and paste it to the other three buttons and just make a few small changes. One of the things I like to do the first day of class when I have a face-to-face -face class is I bring in several sets of Tinker Toys. 
and I put students in groups, usually about four students in a group, maybe three or five, depending on how many students I have. And I give them a challenge. They have to dump out all their Tinker Toys and build a tower that is eight feet tall, freestanding from the floor, and they have to do it in four minutes. So the students are building their towers, getting to know each other. Um, and at the end of four minutes, I keep warning them of the amount of time they have left. At the end of four minutes, they hear the signal to stop, and they have to see if their towers are freestanding or three feet tall. And most, most groups cannot do it in four minutes. So we then talk about their experience and what the limitations were that they encountered and what they would need to actually be able to accomplish this. And of course, one thing that always comes up is we need more time. Several students, though, will also say, say things like, well, we need some duct tape, or we need some twine, or we need bigger pieces, or we need more pieces. All students basically have the same set. They all have the same limitations. And so then I say, okay, you said you need more time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna repeat this challenge, but here's the thing. Rather than giving you four minutes, I'm gonna give you two. You have two minutes to build your tower, but you'll have five minutes to plan how to do it. And during those five minutes, students can build, they can lay their pieces out, they can decide who's doing what, come with an organized plan on how they're gonna accomplish this. And the amazing thing is that even though they have two minutes to build their tower, with that five minute planning time, they're usually able to build their tower eight feet tall freestanding um, in, in the two minute period, whereas before they said it couldn't be done in four minutes, they needed more time. When it's all said and done, we have a discussion on what did they learn. And of course, the big learning experience out of this is the value of taking the time to plan before you start to build. I follow up the Tinker Toy Challenge with some video clips from a Hollywood movie that I make educational fair use of. But in making use of those clips, I can use those on my Canvas course site. I cannot put those here in YouTube because of copyright issues. So I ask my students simply to go to the Canvas course site, log in with your ID and password, and watch that video now. 